to all the geeks and nerds out there, welcome back to another episode of Simply Minecraft. This is a series where each episode we take a look at one aspect of the game and try and make it as easy and as simple as we can. Today we are looking at a stacking raid farm. So this raid farm is going to be super easy to build. There's a little bit of redstone but it's pretty easy to understand and uh, simple. Not too many blocks as well and as you can see here we are spawning all of the waves of the, of the raid at once. So all the mobs come in at one time. We automatically kill the ravagers and all of the, all the remaining uh, mobs will fall down into a clean area for us to chop up, collect the drops and also the XP. Everything in this farm has been precisely placed so once we've killed all the mobs we should have bad omen and then we can drop down this chute which will take us close to a village which is underneath. We'll then zoom back up again in this bubble column ready to uh, chop up the next wave of uh, raiders. They of course will all spawn on the platform above all at one time all the waves together as you can see here and then yeah the process just continues as before. The killing area is surrounded by a number of boats that is to protect us from the Vex. They don't spawn that often but when they do these boats will capture them and keep us safe and sound. And so in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how this farm works. I'm going to explain all of the raid mechanics so uh, if you want to build this farm for yourself you can but also it gives you the opportunity to modify it and make it even better. Now of course there are much better raid farms out there. Don't forget the purpose of this series is to do things pretty simply and give us uh, the, the right balance between um, not much effort for quite a good reward. So if you want something that's more overpowered than this then there are plenty around but if you want something super simple that's good enough for your single player world that will give you you know some emeralds and a few uh, totems on dying then this is the farm for you. So first of all let me show you how to use this farm and explain exactly how it works and then once we've done that we'll do a block by block tutorial so if you want to build this thing for yourself then you can. So I've got some armor on, I've got my sword, I'm ready to go and I found this thing. This is a pillager outpost. This is what you need to find in your world. Now the ideal one to find is if you can find one close to an ocean that will be the best thing. Now I'll come on to why that's important a bit later on but uh, if you can't find one near an ocean that's not the that's not the end of the world. The main thing is that you need to be able to get from here to your farm and we're going to build that in the ocean and you need to be able to get there without going past any villages because if you do pass a village with bad omen which is what we're going to get in a second you will spawn a raid uh, in the wrong place so uh, one way to do that is of course just go across the overworld and dodge any villages or keep this one close keep this uh, outpost close to your to your farm which is in the ocean or you can go through the nether and dodge the villages that way so once you found this structure we are after a pillager wearing a banner and I did actually see one around here somewhere there is this guy this is the guy you are after so you need to come over here and kill him and once you do that you should get a new effect called bad omen so where has he gone there he is see that guy and you're dead and there we go i've got that icon in the top right that means i've got bad omen now we need to zoom on over to the farm which is over in the ocean in this direction and i'll meet you over there we're back at the farm with our bad omen effect and if we look underneath you can see this little fella this is our village well it's a villager and a workstation that is all we need to count as a village and here is the raid it's starting so we just need to come over here in our boat we need to come off come off our boat here and jump in this bubble column that will take us up to the killing area and uh, as we're traveling up you can see the raid bar is going all the way to the end once it gets to the end then the raid will start spawning now the only place it can spawn is on the platform above we'll talk more about details about ranges and uh, measurements that kind of stuff in a bit but as you can see here all of the waves of the raid are all starting at the same time that's a little trick we've pulled uh, we'll talk more about that in a second and you can see that after a short period uh, the water streams come across push all the mobs over the ravages go into the lava and all the other mobs fall down here and they end up in the killing area now we just have to chop away at these mobs and yeah it won't take very long for them to, uh, to to die now make sure you've got a good sword here you want to make sure you've got uh, sharpness you want to have looting uh, mending is also good uh, all the usual stuff uh, sweeping edge is also really good as well so make sure you've got those kind of things on your sword a few clicks and everything uh, everything dies all of the drops goes into this hopper and then into these chests underneath you can expand that storage if you want to and then if we just look up here you can see that uh, the water uh, removes itself uh, from, from the platform and then our raid bar says we got raid of victory and once that raid bar disappears we can jump down here you can also see we've got the uh, hero of the village effect that will give us uh, some gifts if we go near some villagers now that Boris disappeared we can jump down here and when we get to this uh, this chest here you can see the red starts immediately and we can go back up again so basically just have to continue this cycle over and over again until you've had enough <laughs> so that should give you plenty of drops and as you've seen this doesn't take too long uh, for all of the waves uh, of the raid to spawn and for us to kill them 
I'm going to leave that wave in the killing area and we're going to come up here to the spawning area and I want to explain how this part of the uh, how, how this part of the system works and we'll talk more about the spawning uh, in a little bit. So first of all we have this spawning platform here. So this is this area here. This is a five by five area. This is where all of the raid mobs are going to spawn. We make sure we have a little bit of a gap around that to make sure that any ravages that spawn on the edge here don't get clipped into the wall so they will have plenty of space and won't leave the farm. So that makes sure that all the mobs stay inside this area. We have the lava here. So the lava is uh, a little a little bit up see it's three blocks high so that means that any mobs that come along here any of the two mob high uh, mobs they just fall down and don't touch any of the lava so we don't lose any mobs that way and the ravages when they come along because they're in water they jump a little bit and they always end up in the lava and get killed there's one lava source uh, right there so how does this thing trigger and how does the redstone work well over on this side we've got a trip wire and some string over here because there's so many mobs in here at some point uh, this this uh, string will get a mob inside it and that will trigger uh, some redstone over here so once you get a mob in there that will basically power this block, which powers this redstone, which powers this block underneath it. That then goes into this delay circuit. So which is, this is basically a whole bunch of repeaters. So all these repeaters on full on full, uh, full delay comes all the way around here. The signal comes back again to here. So once we get to here, we then power this block, which powers this redstone, which then goes into this delay circuit. So this will this will trigger, and then this will essentially depower this torch here, which depowers all this redstone here, which then releases the water. So after a period of time, essentially waiting for all of the raids, uh, all the waves to spawn, we then release all the water. The water pushes all the mobs along, and and then once this once this delay circuit uh, uh, finishes up, we did talk about that in a previous episode in terms of uh, some useful circuits. So this is a really easy way to do a delay circuit. Once that uh, decays all the way down to zero, then the redstone over here will then power again, and then the uh, the trapdoors will come up and stop the water. And then of course this platform is then free to spawn more mobs. And it just so happens that the timing of this lines up relatively close to when the raid bar above uh, empties, and then we can go down for the next wave of all the raiders. So. That's essentially how the redstone works. You can see here underneath, we've got another little water stream here. So when the mobs get pushed over, they go over here. We're also using stairs at the end here. The reason for that is that sometimes you get mobs that kind of teeter on the edge if you have a little bit of water and they try and walk back again. Uh, so this, this is a little trick you can use to make sure the mobs get pushed off. And yeah, they end up in this water stream over here. So there we have it, that is the tour of the farm. Now we need to talk a bit more details about how raid mechanics work and what makes this farm work as well. So the first thing to talk about is the village. So this, this guy down here, this solitary villager and a workstation. So essentially, this is all you need to count as a village in terms of raids. Now, what can happen here is that if you've got multiple villagers with multiple workstations or bells, then what happens is the game will take the average of all of those, and that is the center point of your village. Now, because we've only got one here, the center point of our village is this workstation. So the position of this workstation is very important. So wherever you build your farm, make sure you know the coordinates of this workstation. That is the center of the village. And all the other things we talk about are going to be based on the position of this workstation. So that is very important indeed. If you're interested in some of the more overpowered farms that are, that are available, what they do is they use multiple villages and workstation and move them around to move the center of the village to different places, which means they can manipulate um, all, the, all of the numbers essentially and the ranges to make the farms uh, even more powerful. Now, of course, we could do that here as well, but that makes the farms a bit more a bit more complicated. And that's what I want to avoid for this, uh, this simple series. So we're just going to stick with one villager and one workstation. And the last thing in terms of the villages, make sure you avoid them when you're when you're coming from your pillager outpost to your farm. And as you can see here, the only thing that counts as a village is a villager with a workstation. So make sure you avoid not only the naturally spawned villages in the world, but also if you've got a trading hall maybe with villagers. Basically anywhere that where you've got a villager, avoid. <laughs> don't go near it, otherwise you may will spawn a raid where you don't want it. You don't want a, a raid spawning inside your main base. So uh, yeah, make sure you avoid it, go through the nether or avoid the overworld. That is really important as well well. So how do the raids actually spawn? Well, let's talk about that for a second. Now, all of this is based on the center of the village. We've already spoken about what that is here, but in our case, it's that that composter that is the center of our village. So when we want to spawn the first wave of raiders, uh, the game will pick a block that is 64 blocks away from uh, the composter. So that is this outside this outside um, circle right here. That's 64 blocks away from the composter. And once it picks a block over here, it will then try and spawn a raid in this five by five area where we're going into the positive uh, the positive x direction this way and a positive z direction that way so an additional four blocks 
this way and four blocks this way from the block it selects. And then you've got this five by five area. So the wave of the raid can spawn anywhere here. Now, if there are no spawnable blocks, so obviously we built our farm in the ocean, so there's nothing here, no blocks that the raid can spawn on. If that fails, it will then try again, exactly the same uh, thing. But in this, this time around, it will pick a block 32 blocks away, which is this circle right here. Again, if it can't spawn anything on this, this area here, it will then try exactly the same thing, but zero distance. And when I say zero distance, I mean right on top of the compositor. So it will try and spawn blocks right here. Now, of course, this is not a spawnable block, but what it does do, it tries to find the highest block. So this is the same for all the circles. It will find what's the highest block that uh, is at this position. And if we look up from here, that is the very corner of our spawning platform of the, of the farm above. And this is that block. You can see here that this platform extends into the positive X direction that way and the positive Z direction that way in our five by five. So we're guaranteed that this is where the raids are going to spawn because it's the only the only place that's available. And that's that's how we control getting the raids to spawn inside our farm rather than anywhere else. But how do we trick the farm into spawning all of the raid waves all at the same time rather than one wave at a time? Well, that is because there's another distance to keep in mind and that is 112 blocks away from the center of the village. And I've got this sphere here to show you that. So this, this sphere is 112 blocks away from the center of the village. Now, if the raiders are spawned outside of this zone, then the game thinks that, they, that you defeated that wave already automatically. And so then it will spawn the next wave and it thinks that that wave is then defeated and so on and so on until all the waves of the raid have been spawned. So as long as this platform here is outside of this sphere, this is 112. 12 uh, blocks away from the composter. As long as we're outside of that range, then all of the waves of the raid will spawn all at once. And there is one more number to keep in mind. That is, how do we get bad omen? Because normally what happens is if you were to fight a raid and you kill a captain as part of a raid, you don't get bad omen. And that's to make sure you don't get raid after raid after raid during normal gameplay. So how do we trick the game into that? Well, there is a yet another number and that is 96. So I've got another sphere to show you. <laughs> it's this one right here. This sphere is centered on the village, as we said before, and this is a radius of 96 blocks. And you can see here that uh, this one just cuts right under here. So if I'm standing here on the killing platform, my feet are inside the village. So that's the, the range of the village. And that's why we can see uh, the raid bar because our feet is inside that. Now, all of the raid mobs that come down, they don't enter this village. And so that means that if we kill mobs outside of that, they don't count as uh, raid mobs uh, as far as the game's concerned. And so we can in fact get bad omen from these mobs. So these are the numbers you need to think about. So we've got, let's do a quick summary, shall we? The game will try to spawn raiders 64 blocks away from the center of the village, then 32, and then zero on the highest block. From the selected block in the positive Z and X directions, it will spawn a raid in a five by five area. If a wave spawns more than 112 blocks away from the center of the village, then the next wave will spawn automatically and that will continue. And this is how we trick the game to spawn all the waves at the same time. The range of the village is 96 blocks, so if you kill your raiders outside of that range, you can get bad omen. There is one more measurement to consider, and that is how close to the village center do we need to be to start a raid? Now that's important when we first come in with bad omen from the uh, from the outpost, but also how far down from the, uh, the, the killing area do we need to drop to be in range of the composter to start the next raid once we've got the, uh, the bad omen. So for that, we need to turn on our chunk boundaries. So press F3 and G, and we can see uh, all of our chunks here. So all of the game is divided up into 16 by 16 chunks. You can see we're inside one chunk here. If I go this way, we're inside a different chunk. Now you can also see a bunch of blue lines coming down uh, segmenting this chunk. So this gives us sub chunks. So each of these blue lines that gives us a sub chunk. So that is also 16 blocks high. So a sub chunk is 16 by 16 by 16. And you can see that denoted by the blue line. So I'm inside this sub chunk here between here and here. And if I go down here, I'm inside a different sub chunk. So why is that important? Well, let's look at the sub chunk that this villager is in. So this, uh, this composter, should I say, that is inside this sub chunk here. So we need to be inside a three by three sub chunks with this in the center. So to kind of demonstrate, imagine that this red uh, concrete block, that is the sub chunk that the composter is inside. So that's this sub chunk we're inside here. We need to go inside a three by three sub chunks around it. So each of these uh, these green glass blocks that, that is supposed to demonstrate a sub chunk. So that is where we need to be. So if this uh, composter is inside this sub chunk, we, need, we can be inside this sub chunk or the one above it. And it just so happens that uh, when we drop down here, our feet just go inside 
this sub chunk so inside this blue line that is enough to start the raid so we're close enough to the villager there that will start the next wave of raiders and then we can uh, walk across here into the bubble column and shoot all the way up so that is how close you need to be now you don't have to have this set up here if you don't want to you could just have for example a platform here just jump down land here and then fly back up with your elytra so if you've got elytra already you can get rid of all the bubble columns and whatnot in a drop shoot you can do do this in a different way this is just something that's a bit more convenient if you don't have elytra just yet because not all not all players go to the end and get elytras so that is the last thing the last measurement that's important a three by three sub chunks around the composter so what can this farm produce? Well, I've done some testing and if you run this farm for an hour, you'll get over 6,000 items in total and they roughly break down like this. So over 3,000 emeralds, I think is probably important. The other one that I'd say is important is also the totems. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to play with some totems of undying, then that's also useful. You get some other bits and pieces that are also cool, but I think the emeralds and the totems are the most important ones. Here's a list of all the things you can get in an hour. And so with all that said, it's very important when we do the build of this farm that you get all your measurements correct. If you get things out of out of whack and not in the right zones, then uh, some of this farm won't work. So pay special attention when we're placing blocks to get things all measured up and make sure you know the coordinates of your composter. That is going to be super important. Now, when it comes to finding a build site, obviously we've built it out here in the, in the ocean. So there's no spawnable spaces. We spoke about the different ranges, the 64 and the 32. So I would say if you want to build this farm, find a good ocean like this where there is no spawnable blocks for let's say 70 blocks at least away from the composter that gives you uh, plenty of blocks uh, space if you've got more than that that's even better another alternative if you're feeling adventurous is to build this in the end over the void that uh, also guarantees there are no spawnable blocks so with that said let's get on to the build shall we and as usual, here is a full list of materials you are going to need. We have two pages. This is the first page, so feel free to pause to get all the numbers. And if I scroll down to the second page, here it is. Again, you can pause here to get all the numbers. I'll put all of this in the description below as well, just for your convenience. So get all the items you need, and then you can build the farm up. Of course, uh, as usual, a lot of these blocks are interchangeable. So here I'm using glass. That's because I like to see inside the farms, but you can use any block here. It doesn't have to be glass. Uh, just make sure that on the spawning platform at the top, there's no nothing spawnable. Uh, the glass has the extra benefit of that also if you're not going to have the drop shoot because you've got a light and whatnot uh, you don't need as much glass so uh, yeah you're gonna need a lot less for that but obviously you can interchange this with any blocks you can use any kind of slab any kind of sign any kind of trapdoor is all good a little bit of redstone but not too bad you should be able to get that uh, even quite early game so once you've got your blocks collected we can build the farm up in addition to that list you're also going to need 14 boats of any color to protect ourselves from the vex the first thing to do is to find the right location to build the farm. Here we have a nice ocean. We've got at least 70 blocks radius around where we're gonna build the farm. And the first block to place is in our case, a composter, but this can be any workstation, but a composter is pretty good. So what we need to do now is once we place this down, first of all, look at the coordinates. And I recommend using the same coordinates that I'm using here. So if we press F3, you can see on the right hand side, it says targeted block. That's the block I'm looking at where my cursor is. And you can see we're at Y66. So make sure your composter or whatever workstation you use is at Y66. That's super important. And then note down the other coordinates. They will be different for you, um, I suspect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, make sure your composter's at Y66. Then you can just add this glass uh, around it. This is for our villager. Then you need to boat a villager over, uh, over here, and then let's get him into place. So just bring your boat over to a little temporary platform. I'm using netherrack here, just because I like that as my temporary block. And then create a stairway up, and then break the boat. He will then, might need a little bit of a, a nudge, but he will see the composter and hopefully in a second we'll walk up to it. And there he goes walking up and he's taken the composter. You can see he's got his farmer's hat on. So you might need to just give him a little nudge. So he goes into place, block him in and one on top as well. So there we go. He's now in place. We can get rid of all of our temporary bits and pieces over here. That's all good. And then we can move on to the next bit. It's not really important where the villager is, but if you want to build this exactly the same as me, then if you press F3, you can see on the left hand side in the middle, we are facing south and that is in the positive Z direction. You can see the villager is behind the composter. So the next step is to come underneath your composter and place down four temporary blocks. One, two, three and four. You can get rid of these top three. Then you need to press your F3 screen again and make sure you're facing in uh, the east direction. That is the positive X direction. So facing this way and place another six temporary blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then place your soul sand next to that. Next, we can build a little platform here to make it easy when we come out of our boat. That can be made of anything. And now we need to build a, a tube coming up out of our bubble column just here. So we need to build this all the way up. Now you need to leave a two gap here, place down a couple of uh, fence gates and you can open them up and then place a glass on top of that. So we should have this one wide hole. Now you need to build this glass all the way up to Y160. 
I've now done that and to show you let me press a little hotkey I've got here now I've got a mod in the store called mini HUD that allows us to have this kind of more more presentable debug screen where it's easier to see what I'm looking at so I'm looking at this glass block which is at Y160 now mini HUD is also responsible for showing the circles and the spheres so if you want to use that as well uh, there's a video on my channel to show you how to install it and how to use it too so I'll link that in the description below anyway once you get to here at Y160 place a source a source of water at the top here and then come all the way down to the very bottom where you've got your soul sand you'll have to wait for the water to flow all the way to the bottom when it does we can start placing kelp on top of the uh, the soul sand here all the way up to the very top so just walk into the water place down your first kelp and then swim up holding down right click so you can place uh, kelp all the way up you're gonna need a couple of stacks of kelp but because we're in the ocean already that should be quite easy to get hold of and this is to uh, create all the water sources we're going to need to create the bubble column once you get to the very top, you can jump down into the water. You won't die of any kind of fall damage, anything like that. And then come back up to the uh, back up to the platform. And then you can just break this very bottom kelp block just like that. That will create water sources all the way up and all your kelp will flow to the very top. You can test it by jumping in and you should be zoomed to the very top. Next, we're going to work on the drop chute. So on the villager side of the bubble column we just made, you can see the villager here and the bubble column here. We need to place a block on the side here. And this is at Y93. If you look at that block, there we go, Y93. Then place a chest on top of this block. Then place some blocks around it here, here, and here. Then get yourself a bucket of water and shift and click on the on the chest that will waterlog it. Now, we need to uh, do a little bit of jibbery pokery here. So next to these two blocks, add some blocks here and blocks here. Then we're going to break this block block and place a sign break this block and place another sign and then we can start building up a one by one just over here now we need to we'll do this all the way up to the same level as that one over there just got to be an empty tube but before we go any further let's double check things are in the right place so it should be as i said before this block here should be at y93 but to double check that we can press f3 and g on our keyboard and we should have the blue line here the sub chunk that should come up at this level so you see the blue line is just here we should have the bottom sign is underneath that blue line and so when we fall down and land on top of the chest our feet which should land in this block right here will be just below this blue line and this blue line should be one sub chunk if we can all the way down there's another sub chunk here and our composter is inside this one just here once you put your drop shoot all the way to the top, then you start by creating a platform of uh, slabs, which is five by seven. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fit all that in, obviously leaving holes for your bubble column up and your drop shoot down. Next, come around to the opposite side from where your bubble columns are and place a chest on the center block here, just like that, a double chest. And then you can come underneath, place a double chest here, and then place a hopper running into it. So the only items that go into this chest will run down into this storage over here. Now you can expand this down further. Obviously, you're gonna to need to give yourself some access to it, whatnot, I'll leave that up to you. You can also add some item sorters if you want as well. I'll leave that up to you as well. Now this block here, this slab that you can break that, that gives you easier access to this chest right here. Then place a hopper directly into that chest and then a carpet on the top. We now need to add the drop shoot for the mobs. So create a one wide hole all the way up to Y188 and then make sure you've left a gap here so we can get to the mobs and chop them up. So yeah, just bring this up all the way to Y188. Once you've done that and you're up at Y188, as you can see here, we now need to look into the west direction. So that's the negative X. And this should be the same direction as your villager is down there. You can just see him just on that direction. So just make sure you're doing everything in the right direction. So you should be facing west. So now on this block here, we need to add another six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then add a two, a two high wall all the way around all of this. So do that all the way around. You can get rid of the corner blocks if you want. You don't need those. And then the next thing to do is come inside of here and then place a sign just here on, on top of the above the hole here. This is going to stop the water, which we're going to place on this end. So water source over there should go all the way across and the sign should stop it. That's going to push all the mobs into the killing chamber. Next, we're going to place down our stairs and we need to make sure we do this in the right place again. So make sure you are facing north. So that is the negative Z. And you can also see that we're facing this way. We've got the uh, the villager underneath us and our spawning platform or our killing platform, should I say, is over there on the right hand side. So we want to place down um, some blocks here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stairs. Then get yourself some slabs and then make a five by five here. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five and fill all of this in. So your platform should look something like this and 
Let's double check everything has been done correctly. This is the moment of truth. Do every, does everything line up? Essentially, this block here, which is the, uh, the the back of the back corner of your spawning platform, this should be directly on top of your composter. So that's what we need to check. So first of all, let's just make sure that if we stand on this block and we look this way, we're looking into the south, which is the positive Z. And if we look this way, we are facing east, which is the positive X. So that is correct. Now, if we were to go down directly from this block, so I'm just going to look down here. You can obviously take your coordinates. So here we're at minus 1385 and we're at uh, 90, uh, 191 and 3623. So if I was to break this and fall all the way down, we should land on top of our composter. And we do. So this is in the right place. Obviously, breaking this block and falling down in survival will probably kill you, even if you've got some good boots on. So yeah, just look at your coordinates here and look at the coordinates of your composter and make sure they all line up and make sure that this block is at 191. So if you've done that, everything should be built correctly so far in terms of heights and dimensions and whatnot. So now we can build the rest of this. So follow all of this along with a row of uh, glass all the way around, just like this. And then once you've done that, we can then build a two high wall. So uh, on the side here, just come up here and add a two high wall all the way around. And that two high wall should just go around these three sides over here. And you can see this is where our stairs are. So just make sure you've got the two high wall around there. Now on the stairs side over here, you'll see there's a gap. So just fill this in uh, with uh, some glass blocks all the way here. Just fill this gap in. Uh, we don't need any of that. Make sure you don't pass anything. Uh, don't place anything inside here that will block any mobs. So once you've done that, then come around to the back and add another row of glass blocks just here, just like that. Then get yourself a torch and place one here and one here. That just makes sure this platform is lit up so we don't get any other mobs spawning on here that we don't care about. Then grab yourself some trapdoors, place them all along here on this uh, this glass that we've got here. Then place a, 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 a block here, so that could be glass, and then a solid block on the top. Then another two glass here and here. Then we get our, we get our tripwire hook, one here, one here next to the torch, and then string all the way along. So string is a bit hard to see, but if you click on it here, you can see that we've got the hitbox. So just place it on the side of the hitbox all the way along. And then once you do that, the tripwire hook should go down. Next, we can open up all of these trap doors and they should be aligned to the front just like that. Just make sure that is the case. Then we can add a couple of blocks here and on this side as well. And then we're going to add some solid blocks behind the trap doors. So you can uh, shift click on the trap doors and add these solid blocks all the way along the line up with the wall. Then add an extra two onto that. Then put uh, redstone dust on top of all of these solid blocks all the way along. Then we need to get some water and we need to water waterlog uh, these, uh, these, uh, these trap doors here. So you click on the glass here and then one there, and then that will create a source in between. So we can do another one and another one there. So that can make sure they're all, uh, all waterlogged. Then get yourself some more glass and then place that along the top here. That's to make sure no mobs can escape through there. Then come around to the side here with this solid block with the tripwire hook on it and place two blocks underneath it. And then we need to have a temporary block here and then one next to it, get rid of the temporary block. Then we can add a redstone torch on this uh, block we just placed and then get a solid block on top of the redstone torch. And then for good measure, put a torch on top of that just to light up these blocks to make sure nothing spawns. Next, come under this uh, second block we just added and place a temporary block. Then we need to come out here and add some slabs. So we need to add nine of these. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is on the same side as where the, uh, where the spawning platform is. And then uh, double this back all the way along to here. Then do something similar on this side, but this time we need to come out for 10 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then come back this way as well, fiddle all this in. Then you can remove your temporary block and just to make sure this is what you should look like should have something like that. We're almost done with the redstone. All you've got to do now is come in here to this block that's behind the tripwire hook and place redstone dust here. Then get yourself your repeaters and place them from here in this direction coming all the way along all the way along to the end but not the end ones here and then place two redstone dust on the end blocks here then turn around and then go all the way back again with your repeaters and then you've got to click on all of these repeaters to make sure they're on the maximum setting. So do this for every single one. Once you've done that, you can then place a redstone dust here and then get your comparators. And these, ha these have to go in the right direction. So from this redstone dust, go this way all the way out and then leave the last two blocks like we did before and then place redstone dust on these two. Then put your comparators going back in the opposite direction all the way down till you fill in all of those blocks. And you should look something like that. The last thing to do is to add the lava to deal with the ravages. So what we need to do now is come out two blocks on this side Fill in all of these blocks along here and then two blocks on this side. Do that for a total of four blocks. So this is the first level. So do another three on top of this. Then we need to place a roof on the top. So place these only here like that. That will stop the ravages escaping when they float up. Then on both sides, come one block above and add an extra three blocks here. That's to make sure that no ravages can uh, kind of escape out of the lava and kind of walk around on these blocks over here. 
Next grab your signs and come at the same level as we've got this gap right here. So along the top and place signs all along this back wall all the way to the other end. Then come to one side and one block up and on this block here place a sign. And then we've got to place a bunch of signs all the way along on top of that sign. So you're going to have to hold down shift and press on there, press OK and then just do this all the way along. Do the same thing on the block above, place a sign here and then places signs on top of those pressing shift all the time and do that all the way along to the very end. It should look something like this. Now what we're going to do is add temporary blocks on top of these signs here. So place them on top of the glass here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're temporary blocks. We're going to move those in a second. Then come along three blocks. And then on the fourth block, which is the center block here, add a bucket of lava on the top here and wait for it to spread all the way to the very end, which it should do. Once, it got, once it's got to the very end, you can check that on both sides. The signs are holding it in place. Then you can break these temporary blocks and you'll see that the lava should fall down and then get stopped by the signs underneath. With the spawning platform done, come down to the killing area and we need to add the boats to protect ourselves. So first add three iron bars in front of the killing area just here. Then get yourself a slab and place it next to this iron bar but on the top and then follow this all the way around just like this. So do this on all the sides just like that and then it should line up here with the iron bar. Along the back here add another row just like this. Then two glass on these two corners here and here and then come around to the front and then we need to get some more slabs and place them here so we can just see half a block of uh, space over here. Then we need to add two more glass blocks on top of the slabs we've just placed. Now we're going to place our first layer of boats. So the way to do this is to come to this block right here and in this corner of the block, if you right click with a boat, you'll place it here. Come around to this side of this block and uh, do the same thing but in this corner of the block place it here and now just try and nudge these two together so when you're in survival this is going to be a little bit difficult so obviously you might need to add uh, some scaffolding blocks around here or you can get into the boat and drive them around so you're basically going to have this on this side same on the other side and then around the back we're going to have two but two boats facing this way so on this block here place a boat here another one here and again just try and nudge these uh, towards the towards the glass as best you can or you can get on get in the boats as I said and drive them in. Once you've done that, you might want to press F3 and B to get your hitboxes of the boats and you can see just roughly how they're aligned. So it doesn't have to be super precise, but yeah, if you can get them pushed in as best you can, that is what you need to do. So you've got to have six boats on this first layer. Then you need to come down and add three trapdoors here on the top and then another three on the side and another three on the back and then another three on this side as well. And then on the back, add another three behind those, just like that. And then we're gonna add uh, boats just like we did before, but on top of these trapdoors all the way around, including two on the front here. And with all the boats in, it should look something like this. Now it can be a little bit tricky, uh, but uh, stick with it. Uh, nudging these boats around can be a little bit frustrating, but eventually you'll get them all in place and yeah, you'll be fully protected from the Vex. And so let's give this thing a try. I'm in survival and I've given myself bad omen and I'm standing on the uh, the killing chamber here. I've also added this chest here, which is totally optional with some milk. So once you've finished here, if you want to get rid of bad omen, you can drink some milk. Maybe even bring a cow up here if you fancy uh, an extra challenge. But yeah, let's jump down and see if we get a raid started. We should hopefully. There it goes. Yeah, the raid has started. And if we come all the way up to the top, we should see our mob spawning. And yeah, we should be able to get bad omen and keep this cycle going. And there are the raiders. I can see them spawning in. You can see them through the glass. So that's good to have the glass at the bottom there. And they're coming in. So if we kill this guy, he's a captain. And we got Bad Omen. Yes. <laughs> okay. That is awesome. All right. So this is working out great. So now we've just got to stand here, chop up all the mobs as they come along. We should be able to see them falling down. There we go. The water's come along, pushing them all down. This is great. And we shouldn't get, uh, yeah, shouldn't get attacked by the, by the Vex. So yeah, just got to keep chopping these up until all the mobs are gone. And that worked out just fine. Now, just a little note on the uh, the evokers and the vex. The they will only summon the vex or the fangs if they can see you or if you damage them and they don't die. So with this uh, long drop shoot, they should be a one hit kill, especially if you've got a reasonable sword on you. And speaking of that, this is the sword that I've got here. So uh, you don't need all of this stuff. Uh, definitely the looting and the sweeping edge. I would definitely recommend any kind of level of sharpness would also help out just in case. But yeah, you shouldn't get uh, attacked by the vex that often. But yeah, just in case you do, that is the reason why. Now we've got the bad omen again. We should be able to jump down here now that the bar's disappeared you have to wait for the you have to wait for that raid bar to disappear because you can't spawn another raid while that bar is still there now the next one has spawned in and if we come up here we should see more monsters spawning above are you interested in getting hold of the schematic for this farm to make building it a little easier well i've decided to try a new service as an experiment to see how it goes and it's called buy me a coffee there'll be a link in the description to my page and on that page i've added an extra for the schematic of this farm so once you go to the page you can click on it and then you can put any price you like you can put zero to get the schematic for free and then if you want to support the channel with a few dollars then uh, you can put it in the in the box and that will help me buy a coffee in the morning to uh, keep me awake <laughs> so i can design some more stuff for you so yeah just an optional extra just an experiment i thought i'd try see what the feedback 
that is like. So if you want to help the channel out and give us some, some support, then that is the place to go. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you did, and please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, then get in that comment section. All right, my geeks, till next time, I will see you later.